Tenders Music. Hey everyone, how you doing? My name is Carlos Negron from Jersey City, New Jersey. I'm a New Jersey certified emergency medical technician. I've been an EMT since 1999, currently 42 years old. Um, coming upon the 20th anniversary of 9-11 and definitely uh, was one of my not one of my, pretty much the worst besides this pandemic um, things that I've had to deal with in my EMS career. Um, where do I begin? You know, it was a beautiful, bright Tuesday, nine days away from my birthday at that, from my 23rd birthday. And I uh, went to work like a normal day. I was working with my partner at the time, Charlie Martina which uh, is now a Plainfield police officer. And we were just walking into the emergency room. And one of the nurses comes out of the triage area and tells us that a plane had hit one of the towers. So I'm familiar with the area. Like I said, I'm from Jersey City. I know that there's always small planes flying around, helicopters. So that was the first thing that came to my mind. Um, we cleared up, went out on another, we went out on another job and we came back and we were in there a couple of minutes maybe and the same nurse comes out frantic yelling that another plane had hit the other tower. So we rushed over again to the waiting room and Lo and behold, both towers were on fire. I was in shock and it was obvious at this point that this wasn't an accident. I turned to my partner and I said, we're gonna get called out there. And he looked at me, he said, you, you think? And nurse comes, she's like, they're calling you guys on the red phone, which is our direct line to the dispatchers. And sure enough, we were being requested to New York City even though we were 40 minutes out in New Jersey. But um, to get to New York City, probably be quicker than most upstate New York places. Most of New Jersey was pretty much called out to that. Um, so we wound up gathering uh, personnel and equipment, getting ambulances fueled up, putting as much equipment as we can on them. Um, in Plainfield at the time, we had about four ambulances. We took three to the, um, you know, I remember most of the people that I went with. Um, I rode with the captain, uh, who at the time was Tyshawn Hawkins, a good guy. Um, and we just had an abundance of people that came and wanted to assist. We rode out to New York. And on the way out there, we heard the reports that the towers had come down. Like, I've literally seen these towers all my life growing up. And I've been to them, you know, I've gone to the top with my dad. Um, and my dad, he was a firefighter. He responded to um, the first World Trade Center attack in 1993. That was a month before he was killed in a line of duty fighting a fire a block away from home. So yeah, we're rolling out to New York City and they tell us they want us in Staten Island to go to the Staten Island Ferry because they were sending people over by ferry across. Um, so we responded to Staten Island and we were coming over one of the bridges that goes from Jersey to Staten Island. I can't remember which one it is. Um, but when we looked over to the left as we were crossing over the river, all you could see was just a plume of smoke, dust, whatever was in there. Just encircling lower Manhattan. The towers had come down. The towers had literally come down. Um, I'm at a loss of words still. You know, it was unbelievable. I used to cut school when I was a kid. Kids don't do that. Um, 
yeah, we used to cut school. We used to go hang out at the World Trade Center, you know, and uh, goof off and things like that because it was just the path train the way. Um, now those things weren't there. I got to go to the top, like I said before, with my dad. Those were experiences that um, I would never forget. One of the craziest experiences is when you were actually able to stand next to the Twin Towers and you would look up and just get dizzy instantly. I know a lot of people that have experienced that. They know what I'm talking about. So we wind up in Staten Island. There they brief everyone. They pair everyone up, uh, you know, EMTs or paramedics and you know, just in case people need advanced um, life support. So they paired us up with a medic from Brooklyn, um, some young Jewish guy, and uh, we waited. Ferry came in, hundreds of passengers, I don't know, maybe a thousand passengers, I don't know how much them ferries carry, but a lot of passengers came off. Um, ambulances were lined up to treat people, and we only treated one person in Staten Island. Either most were able to walk off and walk away under their own power. Anyone who needed a hospital was, I guess, taken. And pretty much if you didn't get away, you know, you were most likely trapped. So it was crazy because, we, like I said, we only saw one patient. We stood there for another couple of more hours. They cleared us from there, sent us back to New Jersey, and then they told us they wanted to stage in Jersey City. Um, so like I said, Jersey City is my hometown. Uh, we get into Jersey City, we wind up in Exchange Place. And we were down there the rest of the evening till about midnight, where uh, I got to see one more patient that we brought over by boat. That was about it for the night. I went over by it was either a tugboat or some kind of, so I think it was a tugboat or old fire boat or something uh, brought us over to the New York City side and uh, we brought supplies. They didn't want to keep us there because uh, it was dark. They didn't have much set up. It was totally blacked out the area. So they sent us back and they were, they said that they would give us uh, a call back to, you know, the ferry us back to New York to help out uh, with the search and rescue. So, you know, I, that was my brief moment that night. We were there for probably about an hour or so, getting things, you know, situated with supplies. And then, um, went back in the morning. You know, on September 12th, we, we boated over. But before I went, I, I was pulled to the side by a family friend from the fire department. One of my dad's friends. Um, me to the side and um, he goes to me Joe is gone so I had no idea what he was talking about I was like what do you mean Joe's gone he's like Joe's gone I was like where'd he go he said he went to New York City yesterday and never made it back That one right there hurt. Um, I dropped down to my knees because that that right there killed me. Um, Joe, Joe Lavero, do you remember that name? Um, he was one of my dad's best friends. Um, he he uh, volunteered for for an organization called the Gong Club, which. Um, pretty much replenishes the firefighters while on scene of uh, fires. Uh, he was also a Jersey City EMT in the 1980s. Uh, he was one of the rescuers in the Journal Square collapse that happened in the 1980s, if anyone's familiar with that. Um, 
Joe looked out after me after my dad passed away. And my dad, I said he died in the line of duty when I was 14 years old. So Joe was very important. He was just at my mother's funeral a month before. And when I said it gets interesting, my mom had passed away on August 7, 2001 from a two-year battle with breast cancer. So, yeah, it was very, very trying. Like, um, like yeah, right there, like, that broke me. Pretty much, you know, the important people in my life were uh, gone. But um, I got myself back up. I composed myself and um, wound up in New York City with a ton of first responders from New Jersey, Jersey City firefighters, EMTs, um, from all over the state, just from everywhere. The things that uh, we saw over there were ridiculous. Um, you know, when I hear people talk to say conspiracy theories, like there were no planes. I was standing next to landing gear. I was standing, these wheels are huge on these airplanes. I was standing next to these, like, I don't know what kind of conspiracy would literally just throw a airline wheel in the middle of the street and all the airplane pieces that I picked up in, put into uh, piles, um, you know, that's not counting that we never really found entire intact bodies. I know I didn't, and I know most people didn't. Um, if you didn't make it out alive, like I said before, I don't think you had a chance, you know, like the most intact part that I saw of a human were, was, well were, because it was a man and a woman, it was two different people, um, music. from the shoulder to the tips of the fingers, like, that was the biggest part of human remains that I found, like, everything was just dust. Imagine all the windows in those buildings, and... I don't remember one piece of broken glass. Everything was turned to dust, pretty much. You gotta figure, those, those two buildings had thousands of windows in them. Um, yeah, no broken glass. It was crazy, you know, and we were inhaling all this stuff. Um, you know, we had the BSN 95 masks, the um, carpenter ones. Those really didn't do too much. And, you know, it's hot. You felt suffocated in them. Um, had to take them off to drink water, to eat. So, you know, we had a lot to, to deal with. It's things, something we never dealt with before. I'm 22 years old. I, you know, I've dealt with death, yes, I've dealt with death. My father's death, my mother's death. You know, I was already at EMT for, for a couple of years. I had done, you know, I had started in 1995 doing EMS work. So I wasn't new to it, but on that scale, yeah, that scale was definitely something that was out of this world. And so yeah, pretty much dealt with that for the next five days. Um, I would go home for for a little bit, get some rest, and then head right back out. I live pretty much five to ten minutes from Lower Manhattan and the tower, so I was just able to shoot through the Holland Tunnel, which they were letting first responders through, um, to go down and assist. But by the time that Sunday came, I, I couldn't go anymore. I, I was mentally exhausted. And my thoughts were, if you didn't make it out, we're not finding anybody alive. And that was a tough one to deal with. You know, coming home, 
my daughter would look at me and she's like, Daddy, you're helping the people out there. And in my mind, I was like, there was nobody to help. Nobody to help. We, we drew blanks. You know, I think the firefighters, there was a couple of firefighters and a couple of Port Authority police officers that were found within the first 24 hours. Those guys were lucky. Um, but other than that, nobody else was. Nobody else was. Um, the mental and emotional trauma that I've dealt with over the years has been significant. Having to see, you know, a professional, professionals for uh, mental health, and I do suggest it. Let's get over that stigma already. Um, if you need mental health, especially in our field, we deal with more death than most. So, you know, let's just normalize that, uh, you know, if we need help, we need it. Don't BS, don't beat around the bush. It's just one of those things. Um, 42 years old. I've already had several colleagues, you know, take their own lives. One just recently. And, you know, things that we do, the things that we see, Beat Tenders music. are hard. Like, don't, don't try and, uh, how can I say, brave through some of these emotions on your own because they will just tear you up. I was one that I was strong. I, I, I went through the whole PTSD thing when I was a teenager with my dad. I got over it. And then, boom. You know, all these things compounded in the matter of several weeks. So, pretty much it, that's my story. Um, just wanted to get that out there. You know, I wish all my other fellow responders that were there the best. You know, love you guys all. Stay safe. Take care.